On to our final road trip report for this year. Our road trip crews have been touring the country in our fleet of three Kia EV6 electric vehicles. With the cost for all kinds of fuels on the rise, we wanted to look at how much difference speed makes to the cost and duration of a journey. So earlier today with our partners at Webfleet, Darren and I drove the same route, but each of us limited to different speeds. Webfleet then crunched the data to give us insight into each journey. We based ourselves at a Webfleet customer, Telent, in Warwick, a fleet operator that's seen massive safety and efficiency benefits from its adoption of tracking and telematics. So let's take a look at what they achieved before we see who did better in our EV challenge. Well, it's Friday morning and it's the last leg of the road trip. And here we... Hello, Jim. Hello there. How do you I think I managed that? Hello, everybody. I'm just jumped out of the studio. I've been, so one day I've been allowed out and I hope you don't mind that I join you here in, in Warwick, Kenilworth. Um, we've got quite a busy little morning. Um, the, the, the challenge is we have two Project Edward cars. We're going to do a little circuit, 30 miles, but we're going to do it as economically as possible. And I believe I'm restricted to a maximum speed of 60 miles 60. an hour. Mm -hmm. Motorways and dual carriageways doesn't matter. Nothing more than 60. What about you? I'm going to be restricted to the speed limit of 70 on the motorways. Oh, I see. Now, well, rem remember, James, yeah, the first one there puts the kettle on. All right? <laughs> I shall see you there. Let's Excellent. see how this goes. Top where you've got the M42 west to north. Yeah, I think that's what he said. The motorcycle there, you turn around, you've got the Junction 5, he said. Meet your Birmingham, go down one Jefferson, turn around in yourself, and then head back. Caught him already. Two Edward cars. Because he's got Edward behind him. Put your light back on. Yeah. So quite, quite basically, we've got to the halfway point now of 20 miles down the road, mm. and we have just caught up with the number one car. Again, reminding you, we are in car two going at 70, and James in car one is going at a maximum of 60 miles per hour where permitted. Well, how long have you been here then? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, James, actually just about one minute ahead of you in total. Mm -hmm. So not a lot. Uh, I thought it'd be more. Um, but and yeah. then the analysis of all this is going to be done by our friends from Webfleet. Webfleet, yeah. What so, do you expect them to be telling us? What will we learn from this, I wonder? Look, there'll be a couple of things, no doubt, in terms of the auxiliary equipment we had on in the car. I don't know if you were feeling warm and comfortable. Um, the cars were both set to eco, that, that we made sure. Um, I didn't have any aircon on the car. I was just using the heated seats today, so that should give us some good feedback. Um, driving style, as you said, there wasn't a lot of uh, traffic there, so there wasn't too many interventions of coming in and out. But I think it's going to be very close, I think. Good. Well, I need to head off now to Gloucester and to Stroud because I'm, I'm meeting Nigel and the team from the Older Drivers Forum in Gloucestershire. Yeah, well, thank you for having me along. No worries, it. it's been great. As I say, we'll have a, a further look now with the data with the team here and we'll report back later. Excellent. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Have a safe break, cheers. So it's um, the final day of our road trip um, for Project Edward this week. And it's kind of sad in a way, but at the same time, I'm also looking forward to understanding more some of the data um, that's driven the vehicles throughout this week through our partner, Webfleet Solutions. And uh, we're gonna try to unpack that now and give you some insights into what went on. Bearing in mind as well, the theme for today is about post-crash care. The way we're going to talk about this is that after any incident or after any intervention, it's probably equally as important that you analyse that data and study it as some form of continuous improvement. So we've had quite an eventful week this week so far, Richard, yeah? And there's a number of things I know that you've been picking up on, but uh, if you'd yeah. just like to sort of take us through what was going on in the background there as we were active on the road this week. Okay, so um, we've put 
our equipment into the three vehicles we've been running for the week. So with a specific objective of gathering data and gathering information that we can then feed back insights and feed into this overall project for the week in terms of each theme for the day, what we want to do. Um, so I guess if we roll back to the beginning of the week, you know, we've, we've put, you've gone into three wonderful EVs, you know, we knew it's new technology and, there's, and not everything is necessarily perfect in the world of, of EV. We'll maybe cover that later. We weren't just driving a car. It was an office for us for the week. Mm. So we had mobile phones charging. We had mm. cameras charged. We, we had everything going on. The, the air con was on the climate control. We thought mm. it was fab. Mm. So I don't know what you saw there in the background in terms of what was going on in terms of our consumption. but We saw that. <laughs> we saw it. And, and you know, the thing for today is, is about post-analysis of incidents. So yes, I'm grateful we never had any incidents of anything to be worried about over the course of this thing. But we did see, you know, really some very surprising um, energy consumption data from your vehicles, um, so much so that your, if you like, your equipment level consumption was the same as your driving consumption. So feeding on about how we deal with this, you know, you and I had a conversation, um, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, um, we explained what was going on, and actually what we saw Thursday and Friday this week was a fundamental shift in actually your consumption levels of that ancillary equipment. And as a result, your efficiencies went right up. So if we translate that across a broader um, spectrum of information, then the way you communicate with those drivers, the way you engage with them and help them understand the impact of their actions can easily lead to change and improvement um, and that, you know, when we talk about post-incident uh, management, I guess the same principles apply. It's, it's understanding the data that you're receiving, turning that into insightful data, and then delivering it in a message type and style that the recipient can actually deal with and, and manage. But we're here today at Talent's head office in Warwick, whereby they use this equipment, uh, and in fact, they really push this equipment mm -hmm. To, to the nth degree and keep you challenged about it. So let's just have a look at what they do to help improve road safety within their organisation. What we try and do every every month is we run new campaigns and those campaigns often come from the driver's ideas themselves. So we, we often share stories about behaviours um, and it's about looking at the analysis and working out exactly what the root cause of some of our incidents are and learning from those behaviours. This year um, for us has been focused on the recent highway code changes. Um, one of the most important things that we wanted to get across to drivers is looking out for vulnerable road users. So when we reached out to our employees across the business, we had one of our employees that wanted to share a personal story, which was about their son being involved in a motorbike accident. And, and that was as a result of a driver not looking carefully uh, vulnerable road users so when we shared that personal story it really hit home with so many of our employees we got so much positive feedback and i think those personal stories really allow mm. everybody to change their mindset and for us that's what it's about it's about making sure that when you get behind the wheel you're thinking about motorbikes you're thinking about other mm -hmm. road users and that story for us really hit home so we're just going to finish up now by having a, a quick reflection upon some of the insights we were led to, to use throughout the road trip. And, and these wouldn't be possible without our partners. Um, three to mention. Um, the first, Webfleet, who we've been with here today, who've obviously had the artificial intelligence and the telematics provided. Um, we've also got our friends at Nextbase that have helped with the dash cams. Fortunately, we've had no incidents, but we had the added security of knowing they were there. And the third point is our friends at GridSurf, who've helped to keep these vehicles on the road throughout the week. Just a fantastic thanks, guys, for all your support. You've been tremendous, and we look forward to working with you next time. And that's the end of the programme and the end of our 2022 week of action. Many thanks to everyone who helped with all the events held during the week. Thanks to our partners and thanks to you for supporting and watching. Don't forget to continue following our social media channels. We're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and YouTube. Like and share our messages if you can and post your own road safety messages with the hashtag Project Edward. We'll be announcing plans for our 2023 campaign later this year. Make sure you join the newsletter list on the Project Edward website to get this information as soon as it's released. 
So thank you very much from everybody here on the Project Edward team. It's goodbye and thanks for watching. See you next year. Thank you.